Hey guys, my name is Javier Perez and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation Visual Arts Service Group. I've been in the industry for about nine years now and in this lesson, we'll be covering how to create cracks within Substance Designer. I'm not necessarily gonna show you guys how to create a full on material, but more so how to create different crack variations that you can overlay within your textures to give it some nice uniqueness and that nice worn effect. So let's get started. So to begin, I just have Substance Designer here open, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a new substance. So I'm just gonna pick something, Metallic and Roughness, and I'm just gonna name this Cracks Demo. Cool. Now to begin, what I usually like to do is just bring in a, a solid uniform color and change it to just a grayscale value. And then I'm going to start plugging this guy into the nodes I know that I'll be using. I'm going to leave the metallic and roughness the same, but I'm actually going to bring in an ambient occlusion node for the ambient occlusion. Plug this guy in, and then plug this guy in, delete this guy, just replace it here, and also plug this guy into the height. The reason I do this is that all my inputs will be going to here, and I don't want to mess with the color, the roughness, and the metallic so far, but uh, any shape or any kind of pattern I plug into here, it's going to um, congregate into the normal, the ambient occlusion, and the height. So I also like to turn on my OpenGL for this. Set it to something like 20. And then as far as the material, make sure to go into the edit and make sure DirectX is off. Cool. So let's just bring in um, a tiling pattern just to make sure everything is good to go. So I'm just going to bring in just a tile generator. Plug this thing in. And we should be seeing this. So one last thing I'd like to do is just turn on my tessellation because by default in substance it is off. So bring this guy up like this. Let's see what the, cool. Looks like the normal strength is just how I like it right now. All right, oh, next time I delete that, okay. So <clears throat> there's a few different ways that um, I like to create cracks within Substance Designer. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the more simple version, and then I'm going to go into a more kind of advanced that gives you a little bit more chunkiness and almost looks like broken concrete, but it can still be used to overlay over brick patterns. So to begin, um, I like to bring in a tile sampler and with this guy we are just going to create little specks of like black and white discs that will then be plugged into a distance node so but we can actually create the kind of the same effect and I'll show you guys that after doing this so what I like to do is just change this to a disc and I'm gonna go all the way down here at the bottom and I'm gonna turn on uh, color randomization and just to get some randomization within the different discs. And then I'm actually going to take the scale of these guys down to like 0.5, maybe even less. So like maybe 0.1. I just want pretty much little speckles. So from here, I'm going to go into the position and I'm going to do position random. That way we get kind of just random. Uh, they're all over the place. And then from here, depending on how much cracks you want, this can be kind of changed on the fly. So for right now, I'm just going to do half on the mass random and see where that gets us. So from here, I'm going to do a levels. It, it can be a levels or a histogram scan, whatever works for you. But basically what we want to do here is we want to take actually take away all the grayscale values that we added within the color random uh, in the tile sampler. And we just want to bring in the whites. So let's actually just bring these guys in as much as we can. Then we're going to bring in the distance node. We're going to plug the original tile sampler as a source input and then the leveled kind of just white, pure white speckles into the mass input. From here, we're going to make sure it's on grayscale, change this to only source, and then bring this up to maximum distance. Now you'll notice that we have quite a few different cracks, all similar sizes. What we can do here is if we go back into our tile sampler, we'll start messing with some of the different um, 
parameters within this guy. So like I was talking about earlier, we can bump up the mass random and we'll start getting some bigger shapes because if we go back into our tile sampler, you'll notice that there's going to be more gaps in between each one of these guys. One other thing that we can do is within the tile sampler, um, right now currently all our discs are the same size. So what we can do is we can do a scale these guys up and then do a scale random and kind of just give them a little bit more variation. So now if you kind of see here, we have some bigger discs. This might be a little bit overkill, so I'm just going to bring this down. We don't want something too crazy, so this is pretty okay. But now we have just a little bit more variation on here. And um, the next thing we want to do with this guy is we can do an edge detect. Now there are a few little uh, few things I would like to talk to you about before moving forward with these guys. So I'm just going to send this to edge width. Two things that we can do with these guys. Um, so you might like these shapes, um, but there's also a way where we can squash them down while still keeping the tiling. So if we actually go into our distance here and double click on it, and if we actually bring down the pixel size, either the width or the height, we can actually get some pretty cool, interesting results by bringing these guys down. And we can either get like, almost like the cracks are almost flattened and kind of stretched left or right. The cool thing about just messing with the pixel size is that it actually keeps the tiling consistent throughout the, the material. So that's in case you want to do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. And I talked to you guys earlier about how we can kind of get the same result a different very, uh, with a different way. That's just by bringing in the cells. Uh, I think it's cells one. And then we're just going to bring up disorder, bring up the scale. And we're going to do the same thing, just bring in an edge detect. And bring this guy in here. Edge roundness, tolerance. And I'm actually just going to scale this even more so. So you can kind of see that we have somewhat similar kind of um, results. But with this tile sampler to levels to distance node, um, I feel like it gives you a little bit more control and it can give you a different varying size within the actual um, cell pattern that you can actually mess with and just give you different sizes within each different one. Cool. So whichever one you want to use, we're just going to move forward from here. I'm just going to move this to the side. And from here, what I like to do is just do a slope blur grayscale on this guy. So I'm just going to bring in a slope blur plug this guy in and what I personally like to do is just put in a Perlin noise this is one of my favorite noises within substance designer but feel free to use whichever noise you guys like this is just gonna give us um, kind of some chipping along the edges of these guys so we just want to bring this all as much down as possible and change this to min so we start getting a little bit of chipping here and there, so nothing too intense, but we start bringing up a little bit. We can kind of get some nice chipping effect here. We can mess with the scale. We can get some more chipping like that. I'm going to do the same thing. Just do another slope blur grayscale. This time I'm going to do another purlin noise, so here I'm just going to duplicate it. And with this guy, I'm actually going to bring the the scale of it way higher, something like this. So with the scale being way higher, we actually have to move down the intensity quite a bit. I'm just going to change this again to max. And now we're starting to get even more kind of just kind of more smaller cracks in there. So what we can do here is You know, it's up to you guys, whatever you feel is right for the material you're working on. We, again, these are all kind of, these numbers aren't locked in place. So we can, after we've applied it to our material, we can always go back and mess with this. One thing I did notice that I'm not a big fan of is how thick these actual cracks are. So what I like to do is just go back down here and then bring them as close as possible we can. So that's pretty cool. Next up, uh, I'm going to do one last slope blur grayscale on here. I'm just going to bring this guy in. And with this one, I'm going to bring in a clouds for this one. So let's just do a clouds. Let's try, let's try a three for now, or actually maybe just a clouds one. 
So let's do clouds one. This is gonna, because this is so granular as opposed to kind of the different white and black values, um, this one is gonna give us a more intense kind of cracks or chipping. So you'll see as soon as I plug it in, I'm just gonna bring up the samples, bring down the intensity. And you can kind of see that we're getting way more um, chipping on these guys. I'm gonna set this to min and just keep this intensity, just mess with it as much as you want. Might bring it on the levels now to see if we can flatten those out a bit so it's not too intense. So let's just bring this guy. You can also just have it appear on certain areas so you can see now that it's not going all over the place but more so just in certain areas. So just play around with something like that looks pretty, pretty nice just in a few little areas. What we can do here now is essentially we can plug this in right now and kind of see what result it gets. But um, I'll just plug this in right now just so you can guys kind of get a sense of what's happening. And from there, we'll kind of keep refining it. So I'm going to do a blend. Going to blend this as the bottom. Going to blend this as the top. And I'm just going to set this to multiply. I'm going to plug this guy in here. So already we're getting a pretty cool result here, actually. The only problem is, is how we talked about in the last video where I discussed the flood fill. This would be a perfect opportunity to utilize that new flood fill um, that we learned from the last video. So right now, all the cracks are pretty consistent and going across the entire um, material. What we want to do is kind of break it up and give it some randomization. And also we might want to mask it out so it doesn't show up in certain areas. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what we want to do is bring in a flood fill. Again, all we need is one because uh, the other nodes will do the rest of the work for us. I'm actually going to bring in a, let's do a random color. This is going to be for the vector warp, and I'm also going to bring in flood fill to random grayscale. And this is going to be the mass that we'll be using. So I'm just going to move these guys to the side. And from here, I'm going to bring in a vector warp grayscale. That way we can still plug in the color. I'm going to plug this guy into here. Already, you can see our cracks instantly have just changed positions or kind of more randomized. So let's plug in and see what happens. So nice. Now we have some nice chipping and we got some nice, something that's feeling a little bit more natural. I'm actually going to bring down the scale of the tessellation just so we can kind of get a better look at what's going on here. Now I do like what's going on except for the fact that I wish it wasn't all over the place. So what I'm going to do with this random grayscale is I'm going to do a histogram select. Just going to bring the contrast up and then we can start messing with the range. So maybe we only want it like, maybe like that's pretty good. Just plug this guy in. It's only going to show up on a few pieces. So now we have pretty much some subway tiles with some nice edge chipping and cracking. So we can end it off here, but let's continue and see what else kind of stuff we can do with this guy. So one thing we can do is we can actually do a blend on this guy. And maybe we want to have some like smaller cracks coming in from the other. <clears throat> maybe we want like smaller crack coming in within the middle of these bigger cracks. So what we can do here is we can actually just take a transform. Plug this guy in and I'm just going to. Actually, we can either do one or two things. We can actually bring it, scale it in or scale it up. Uh, lower so I'm gonna do scale up just to see what kind of results we get and I'm gonna actually do a let's see we're gonna do a multiply that way we're getting even more cracks so we have like these nice big cracks but we also have the smaller cracks so it's actually maybe we want to lower down the opacity too so that way we get kind of um, different effects as far as like how the crack how deep the cracks are as opposed to these so plug this guy in so right now you can kind of see the effect that it gave us 
we're getting just some more variation within the cracks, which is nice. So let me just plug that guy in. And because I'm using NVIDIA's RTX, I can quickly keep iterating on these cracks and still have a nice and fast 3D view where I can see my results and not have any downtime while I mess with these different parameters. Now, maybe this is the effect you want, or maybe you're still looking for more, some more variation. One thing I did notice is that all the kind of crack lines feel like the same width. So let's try to break that up a little bit. So I'm just gonna delete this guy. And we're actually gonna go back to here. So I'm gonna duplicate this edge detect. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, these currently are both the same uh, edge width because I duplicated one. Let's actually bring the edge width up on one of them slightly. Now let's blend. And to break this up, I'm just actually going to use a Perlin noise with a kind of a high or a low scale. So maybe something like this. And let's see what kind of results we get before plugging in. So I'm not seeing too much. We kind of see something, something kind of what we want. Let's actually mess with the blend modes and see if we're seeing what we're looking for here. So I, I think I, I see something. So we're getting some that are a little bit thicker, but I think we need to push this guy a little bit more. That way we can see what we are looking for. So let's actually go down to here and start messing with the different blend modes. What we can do here is let's do a copy. Let's bring in a levels. Now we can level this guy out and let's see what we got. So let's actually bring the blacks in. There we go. Bring in the whites. There we go. Now, as you can see, we're getting um, some thinner and some larger here, but let's actually bring these guys down just a smidge like right here. Now we're getting some interesting um, shapes here, but you'll notice that we have like kind of this weird gradient we could fix that easily by just going to here, doing a histogram scan, contrast. Yeah, just like that. Maybe bring down the contrast just a bit. Cool. And let's plug into our, our already like slope blur grayscales and see what effect this is giving us. Cool. We'll go down the line and see kind of what's going on here. So you can see we're getting some thicker cracks and some kind of skinnier cracks. And it's this is all just because we have all these slope blur grayscales already set up, which is nice. We didn't have to do any new work besides just making this, um, this kind of setup right here. I'm not liking the smaller cracks within the bigger cracks. So I'm just going to take that off right now, kind of see what we get. I'm gonna bring in a histogram scan, I believe. So that's the one I'm looking for. Oh, it was actually histogram range. I'm gonna to try to get this kind of to something around like here. Then I'm going to do a levels. Just gonna bring this up a little bit, yeah. So I did this histogram scan right here just to level it out and then with the levels I can bring it in and as you can see we're we're able to kind of crunch down the smaller um, cracks and define them differently from the larger cracks so let's actually plug this guy in a little bit and see what happens so there we go not only do we have these larger cracks but we also have these smaller cracks as well let's actually on this blend let's bring it down so they're not completely into the because we're using, we were using completely black, so it's getting really dug into these, into these guys. So not necessarily what we would want most of the time. Cool. So that's feeling pretty good. One last thing that we can do with this guy to get even some more variation and just introduce more of what we are doing in the flood fill, is we can actually let's see. We might be able to use a flood fill here. So let's do a flood fill and see if this breaks or not. So perfect. It actually did not break, which is what we're looking for. 
From here, we can do a flood fill to gradient. I'm gonna plug this guy in, set the angle variation, that way we get different gradients. And what I'm going to do here, so I'm just gonna blend this on top of this guy. I'm going to do a multiply. Maybe set it a little low. And then this is what we're gonna plug into our into our main guy. So if we go into our normal, we'll see what's happening here. So let's actually bump this guy back up here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting these nice grayscale values into it. So you can see when I move the light over, you can see that we're getting different normal angles because we've added the different um, gradients and the different grayscale values within the tiles. We'll go back into the normal. You can't see it too much here on this normal. Maybe if we bumped it up to something a little bit more ridiculous, like 50 or something. Yeah, you can kind of see the different shades of normal that we're getting. And also, when we move the light across in the 3D view, you can see that we're getting that kind of chipped tile effect, which is really nice. So not only are we adding uh, kind of chipping within our small tiles, but we're also getting some nice undulation on the surface. So it's not all flat, which is really nice. So that about, that about sums up this kind of first way of creating cracks that um, I want to go over. Next up, I'm going to do another variation of cracks that is just a little bit more advanced and kind of give you guys uh, a completely different result than what we got here. All right, so for these guys, let's just move out of the way a little bit. And what I want to do is <clears throat> let's actually grab the first set of nodes that we use for our original cracks because I, I'm going to use the same method to create our initial shapes. But for these guys, I want more of larger shapes to begin with because um, as the graph progresses, we're going to keep adding smaller and smaller graphs or cracks. So let's just go back into this distance and we're actually gonna we're actually gonna um, take down the amount of x and y. So maybe eight or eight sounds pretty good. Let's see what this gives us. Yeah, this gives us a pretty good starting point here. So what I want to do here is I'm just gonna do a directional warp. Um, we're gonna try a few directional warps just to see what the um, kind of results are. And then I'm gonna do a uh, moisture on here. So again, this is just a moisture noise, but feel free, you guys can use, again, any one of these grunges, like we can actually bring in the clouds if we want. The, these kinds of nodes aren't set in stone. Um, we, we can go back and change them anytime. So let's just plug this guy here currently and kind of see what we get. All right, we're getting something cool. I want to try another directional warp here. I'm going to do the multi-directional. Let's just see what kind of results this one gets. Let's go plug in this. Let's do I'm kind of liking this feeling here. I'm actually going to go with the multi-directional, just something subtle here. Okay, uh, next up, I'm just going to do an edge detect. And we're starting to get some nice jagginess here. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to get something kind of thin. Again, we'll probably go back and mess with the thickness a little later. Next up, we're going to do a flood fill. And we're going to start bringing, we're going to use a flood fill to get our gradients back. So let's just do flood fill to gradient and we're just gonna set this guy to be a different variation angles and we're just gonna hold off for for now for here next up I want to bring in a crystals one gonna bring up the disorder and I'm gonna bring the scale up really high till we get something like this I'm just gonna mess with the different random seed and what I want to do with this guy is I actually want to bring the same noise that we use and just kind of overlay it a little bit. That way we get some noise. So let's kind of go through the different, maybe multiply would be kind of good. Just get some, some subtle noise in there. So 
keep that as it is right now. And let's go from here. So from here, I'm just going to do a blend here. And I'm actually going to bring this guy down here. Actually plug it in the opacity as well. I'm going to bring this guy in here. So now you'll see that we're getting these crystals coming through almost overlaid on this guy. So we're getting that effect. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a histogram scan. And what this histogram scan is going to what this histogram scan is going to do is we're actually going to start taking away. We're going to open up some gaps here. So if you notice like here, here and here, we're getting some interesting shapes here. Now, let's actually do an edge detect and you'll see what's going to happen here. So bring the edge around this down. Let's actually bring it up just slightly. You can see that we're getting these almost smaller shapes coming through, which is really nice. So let's actually, if we kept it kind of low here. Okay, that's interesting. Let's actually play with the different, let's go back on this blend and maybe we can, and set this ah okay let's actually set that there I'm not even sure if we need the opacity here so let's actually disconnect this for a second no, we do okay let's try to mess with this guy a little bit maybe we can get some more variation in here so something like that and maybe we can mess with the random C to give us a little bit more shapes to our liking. So maybe something like that. I'm just gonna go different blend modes and see different results we, we could get. So that was on copy. So let's just go down the list and see. Subtract might work because I'm liking these gaps that we're getting here. Maybe we can open these up just a little bit more. All right, cool. So let's continue from here. And what with these shapes, we're actually going to bring in our original shapes back. So I'm just going to do a blend. Take this guy up here. I'm going to hit Alt to create um, a cut. And then we're just going to bring this guy back. And there we go. Now, with those kind of weird cracks that we had now because we brought back the old original cracks those are being connected and now we're getting even smaller cracks coming in so it's essentially it's essentially taking these larger shapes and cutting them in half so what this kind of process does is we're essentially going to keep layering the same kind of thing we're doing and we're just going to continue on to break these to even smaller pieces so what we can do here is we can actually do a flood fill. I'm just gonna bring this guy over here. I'm gonna lower him over here, and then we're gonna do a flood fill to gradient. And we're gonna introduce um, just the same kind of setup here. We're gonna do the angle variation. We're gonna do a blend. Bring that here, and then we're also gonna bring in this guy. I'm just gonna put a dot node here for cleanliness. And again, we're just doing the same thing. What we did basically, what we did on this guy where we overlaid this dude, we're gonna do the same thing. It's kind of, uh, it's almost like we're repeating the steps and we're kind of just layering on within the graph. So I'm gonna go back in here, let's do a subtract. And we're bringing in some of this. So let's do another histogram scan here. Cool. Let's do contrast position. Again, we're going to get those bro broken up patterns. And what we're going to do here is again, just do an edge detect. See what kind of crazy shapes we get here. So we're getting some interesting shapes here. We're going to do a blend. Set this on top here. And then we're just going to bring actually, sorry, I'm going to bring this original guy. It's just kind of, there we go. Yeah, so now our shapes are kind of breaking up even more so. 
One thing I'm not a big fan of is just overall the size of these guys. So what we can do is just go back into this very first edge detect, or actually it's happening every time we bring in an edge detect. So let's go back into here. We are getting some nice variation, but it's just too wide for what I'm like. So these are cool. We're getting some, we're getting some nice thin cracks, but we also have these larger cracks. So it's giving us a really cool effect here. So let's actually bring this guy down. Yeah, that, that, that looks pretty good. Maybe even more so on these guys. Okay. Let's actually take this edge detect and bring it down just a bit. See what we got just by messing with the different edge detects and give us some different variations. So that's looking pretty cool. We might have, we're gonna break a flood fill here. So I'm actually gonna see where that guy is popping up. Looks like here. So let's actually bring this guy up a little bit. And maybe we can mess with the position, there we go. I just know that subtle mark is gonna break one of our flood fills later on, which I do not want. So moving forward, we're just going to do another flood fill. We're going to bring in our flood fill to gradient to give us those nice um, different angles within our shapes. Do a blend, blend here. And let's actually just do multiply. We're going to set this to random angles, so angle variation, cool. Next up, I'm going to do a slope blur grayscale. And I'm just going to bring in kind of just another Perlin noise. We're going to break this guy up a little bit. Disorder. Intensity. We're going to bring the samples up, bring down the intensity. We're just going to start chipping away at some of these like larger areas. Once we have the chipping to our liking, we're gonna bring in two different histogram scans. For one of these, we're just going to bring in, let's actually bring down the contrast. I just wanna bring some of the whites back a little bit, so maybe something around there. And we're gonna duplicate this, and for this guy, we're essentially just trying to get the original, just black and white mask here. We're gonna do a flood fill again. And this is gonna be last two, I believe. So we're gonna do a flood fill to gradient. I'm gonna do this twice actually. So angle variation, duplicate this guy. And we're just gonna move the random seed. And I'm going to blend the first flood fill here. So I'm just gonna set it like right here on multiply. And I'm gonna do the same thing Bring the second flood fill again on multiply or maybe let's do actually let's go back to the first one and do I'm just gonna go through the different ones yeah min darken and again let's do a min darken as well so like like we talked in the first video we're just introducing some more kind of cuts and it's almost like we're chipping away at this guy and that is pretty much it. So let's plug this guy in and see what kind of result we get. So I'm going to bring this guy all the way over. And you're, I'm going to plug it in without just on the tiling pattern just so you can kind of see what's going on. So let me actually change this to just a plane so you can guys kind of visualize. And let's actually bring up the tessellation here. So there you go. You can kind of see it's more like a broken concrete almost, but the different sizes and shapes and the different kind of, um, just a different cracking gives it a really nice effect. So what we can do is kind of just go back and see where we're able to kind of do some more interesting stuff. So maybe we want to chip this guy even more so. Maybe something like this gives us some more cool chipped effect. And we could go back into any of these guys and just um, mess with the different settings. Maybe we think these are a little too sharp, so we can just go ahead and blur them. But let's actually go ahead 
move this guy up here and I'm gonna use the same vector warp and we're just gonna switch it up here so I'm actually gonna plug this guy and replace it cool and let's actually just plug this guy into our outputs see what kind of result we get our tessellation is a little high so I'm gonna bring this guy down and I actually want this showing up on a little bit more area so let's bring this guy up cool so now we're getting just some way more variation as far as our cracks uh, I think a great way to utilize this one is let's actually kind of bring this down more so um, maybe like a five by five this will give us kind of like some nice yeah there we go now we can really see what's going on with these cracks we're getting just a lot more variation within the the actual tiles it's just something that's a little bit more aggressive than what we were originally doing so looks like ah yes okay cool let's change this guy to something like Yeah, add sub. There we go. So that's looking pretty cool. Again, we can kind of, we can probably take this even lower if we want to maybe uh, two by two. Maybe we want to break up like some different tiles or something like that. So that's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and actually make a brick. Or actually just bring a tile random. That'll give us some nice variation to look at. Plug this guy in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we're getting just some nice undulation as far as like when the light hits it, we're getting something that's pretty intense. So what we can do is just bring down the opacity. And there we go. So those are pretty much uh, the two basic ways that I like creating cracks within Substance Designer. We have one that's a little more streamlined kind of just smaller cracks and we're able to just get um, some nice chipping, some nice um, grayscale values so it can mess with the height. And we also have this more extreme aggressive version that brings in just more slanted angles and we're using the flood fill a little bit more. And this is more so one to be used with a sidewalk if you want to crack something that was super distressed. And I would say this, um, this, the one I showed you guys in the beginning is one that you'd probably use on like bricks or something like that. It all depends on what your use case is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Make sure to look out on the channel for more videos. And I'll see you in the next one.